Here are those rules for naming alkanes that we saw in the last segment. And I'm going to show you and demonstrate the use of these for putting names with structures here in a few minutes. Um, there are many examples in your textbook and a lot of the exercises at the end of chapter 2 that are assigned are practice using these rules to put names with structures. There's also some worksheets a part of this second chapter that you can use for extra practice as well. And as I said before, we're going to use these rules going forward into other chapters as well as we encounter different substituents that are important in organic chemistry. For right now, since we're just dealing with hydrocarbons, the substituents also just contain those elements. And so we need to use these rules to distinguish those kinds of carbons from the ones that are part of this parent chain. That's really the key to this naming system. This next slide here shows uh, some common substituents for alkane molecules. They are termed alkyl groups because their names end in YL and um, because they just have carbon and hydrogen they can show up a lot of times in, in the types of compounds we see in this chapter. Remember CH4 is methane so if you take away a hydrogen from methane we call this fragment a methyl. So this little dash here is not just a hyphen it's intended to be a bond because methyl wouldn't be happy by itself it's going to have to be attached to a parent chain somewhere. Um, we just call it methyl because it is so similar to methane. If you take away a hydrogen from ethane, you get an ethyl group, CH3CH2. And this carbon with two hydrogens would need a, another bond to be a happy uh, set of atoms. And so ethyl groups can also dangle off of parent chains. Uh, propane is the three carbon alkane, so propyl is the three carbon fragment. And there are others that we'll uh, see a little bit as we go along. Um, here's a fourth rule to add because we're going to have to number those carbons in the chain to locate substituents and we want to number in the direction that gives us the smallest numbers in our name. So that doesn't always mean we number from left to right. Um, we number from whichever end again will give us the lowest number. The idea is that these rules should lead everyone to the exact same name for a compound uh, even using the same numbers. Now the way these isomers of C5H12 are drawn, uh, we are going to essentially number them from left to right. And when all five carbons are in sequence, we say there are no branches or substituents, and that one's regular old pentane. Uh, but the one in the middle, notice it doesn't have the word pentane in its name, because only four of those five carbons are part of that parent chain. So it's named as a derivative of butane. It's butane with a methyl group hanging off the second carbon, Thus, we call it 2-methylbutane, all one word. And we just separate the number from the letters with a hyphen. This one that I had previously identified as neopentane, that is a valid name, although it's not very systematic. Uh, this is the systematic name, 2,2-dimethylpropane, because only three of those carbons are in sequence, and there's two branches, both off the second carbon. So dimethyl means there are two of these methyl groups, and we use the twos twice just to identify the location of both methyl groups, even though they are coming off the same carbon. Um, and so for other alkanes, they may have more carbons in the parent chain. They may have more branches, but we can distinguish those and, and put a name with them uh, just using these uh, simple sets of rules here. The point of this slide is that we don't have to draw that parent chain from left to right. We don't have to number it that way. It can zigzag up and down our page. But as it says here, all of these can be numbered in a way to identify them as the exact same molecule, 2-methylpentane. So it takes a little bit of trial and error sometimes to know what should be the number one carbon. We have to start at one end or the other, but it's not always the end we might guess to begin with. But with naming these, we can quickly come up with uh, the way to number it so that we can use a number two uh, to identify the location of that methyl group. And so that's something to watch out for in general.